Oh. Could this be Andromeda? Oh. Let's increase the exposure. Oh. Hello, everybody. We're looking at the Andromeda. Oh, we're looking at the Andromeda galaxy. Look at that. I can oh, start to wow. see some dust planes. How about. <laughs> That's awesome. That looks so good. Beautiful. Nudge that down a little bit. Welcome to space, y'all. We're looking through a uh, eight inch catadioptric telescope named Henrietta. We named her after Henrietta Swan Levitt. Swan Levitt. I'm hoping I'm saying her name right. And uh, let's get rid of... There we go. And get nice and somatic looking. There we go. All right. And uh, it's made by Mead. That's really pretty. I love that. We did it. We got the Andromeda Galaxy. We kind of got the International Space Station. <laughs> Maybe if I was a little bit more zoomed out, it would have been better. I'm increasing the exposure to four seconds now. Nice. That's really cool. Let's go up to five seconds of exposure. Let's go up to six. <laughs> And let's go up to seven. It's pretty good tracking. I, uh, I'm using an alt azimuth motorized mount, the LX65 that came with the eight inch ACF. And you notice those dark bands going there. Those are, I believe those are the dust planes. Okay, so I'm gonna switch it up. I'm gonna go over to a different telescope now. I'm gonna put this camera onto a a little telescope. It's so going to drop the exposure back down to one second. Just for funsies now. While I grab some adapters. Oh, look at that. I had them right next to me. I have a question. Subject. Um, you mentioned dust planes in the Andromeda Galaxy. Are those the like dark bands that you see? Are they dark? Like, are they are they blocking out light? Is is that why they're dark? Yes. Okay. That's the cool. light that would otherwise be coming to us is getting absorbed. That's so cool. By the dust. The dust is like my photons. Mine. You don't get to see <laughs> nothing. All right. Let's switch uh, to a different to a different uh, telescope. I'm going to try and get a wider field of view. Oh, sorry. I know, that's bright. People sitting in, at home in their beds are just like, I can't see anymore. I was about to go to sleep. All right, so we're out of focus. Coming into focus now. Oh, and sorry for the loud noises. I dragged that to the box around. <laughs> I didn't even realize that. Oh, cool. Here comes the Andromeda Galaxy.
Let's see if I can drop the exposure a little bit. focus. Sorry, I'm focusing it from far away. I should have focused it before I put this on. Oh, there we go. Okay, I got some purple on the stars there. We're looking at the Andromeda galaxy, everybody. So let me go ahead and increase the exposure. Back up for one second, and I'm going to lower this so it's a little bit better in field of view. Now we're looking through the Mead ETX-80, Alice. All right. Can you hand me the mouse right there on the ground, please? Thank you. All right, let's go up to like Seven seconds of exposure. Let's just go straight, straight for the top. Going for it. That's a little too bright. <laughs> <laughs> Let's drop it down to four. Get rid of. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> cool. I think a little satellite just passed in front of us. Nice, how's that? That looks so cool. Okay, if I lower it a little bit, I think we can get the the little satellite galaxy, M32. Let's see. Hello, y'all. Welcome to, welcome to the Andromeda galaxy. Oh, cool. All right, I could see the little galaxy to the uh, left, or to the right of it or on the phone, it's to the upper left. Yeah. On our screen, it's to the right. You can make it out, right? Mm-hmm. So that's M32. That's a little satellite galaxy that goes around M31. It's a little fuzzy blob, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that looks really cool. I messed it up. I'm going to go this way, I think. Yeah, I'm going to go a little bit more down. Okay, right there. And... Revealed that the 
galaxy contains over one trillion stars. M31 is by far the largest member of the local group, which includes our own galaxy, the Milky Way. Through a telescope, it appears faint, fuzzy, and cigar-shaped in the brighter central region. It actually has a double nucleus. It is best seen through wide-angle eyepieces. The Andromeda galaxy is the most distant object that can be seen with the naked eye, but only if you're under a very dark sky. Hubble's calculations and observations about Andromeda helped him to realize the scale of the universe. It is about 2,200,000 light years from Earth, is 160 by 40 arc minutes in size, and shines at a magnitude of 4.8. Awesome. We did it. We did the Andromeda Galaxy. It's about time, yeah. honestly. It looks awesome. <clears throat> see, now here you can see those dust planes again. Or dust lines. Can you see them? Mm -hmm. Those two tiger stripes to the upper left of the core of Andromeda. Uh, also, this is the, the light that's hitting the the telescope is coming from 1.1 trillion stars. It's a lot of stars. And that's awesome. I want to try and find another galaxy. I want to try and find Triangulum. I believe it's M33. Let's see. M33. And I don't know if it's actually in the telescope's database. It's not my other one. Photographs of this galaxy. See, they say the However, pinwheel galaxy, but that's over towards... That's not right. Could you look up for me the triangulum galaxy mm -hmm. and tell me what Messier object it is? Mm -hmm. And if any of you know, let me know. And this is the Andromeda galaxy, by the way. It is M33. Okay, so when I typed in M33 on the telescope, it tried to send me to the pinwheel galaxy. I want to say the pinwheel is M101. Okay, so they have that mixed up in the telescope. Darn it. Gosh darn it. All right, so um, maybe uh, we can wing it. Let's see, I see triangulum. Where, is that triangulum over there? No, maybe, ah, I forgot. It's such a weird, oh, it's so weird looking at the sky like this. <laughs> okay, so there's Andromeda. Near our... I'm on it. Oh, can you tell me? Oh, let's go to Mars, actually. Right, we're going to Mars. Because <clears throat> that's right, we were going to try and see uh, Uranus tonight, actually. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's so close to Mars in the sky. Mars.
don't think I'm nearby. I, I think I'm close, but I don't think I'm that far. Oh, yeah, we're, we're a little off. Okay, there's Mars. Now, where is Uranus? Is it Uranus? What do you mean? Yeah, we're looking for Uranus, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're laughing at that, I know. Because we're looking for Uranus, get it? Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> right, I think it, we'll check this side. I think we're ultimately looking just for like a green dot, right? Oh boy, this seems harder than I thought. Nothing. Okay, let's go back, get Mars. <laughs> and this time we'll put Mars on the lower end. Ooh, I wonder if that's it right there. To the upper right. Oh, hmm. Or left on the, hmm, let's see. It looks like just a bright star. Yeah, I mean, when we looked at Uranus through the telescope, like, last year or the year before, whenever, I don't feel like it was very bright. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, you're alright. Alright, if anyone knows where you're... Uranus is. <laughs> Let us know. We're in the area. Well, you know, I should just be able to go to Uranus. Uranus. A planet Uranus. <laughs> <laughs> wow, they Sorry. really pronounced it that way. <laughs> Diameter. Four times the size of Earth. A planet Uranus. Did they say four times the size of Earth? Yeah. That's not as big as I thought. Same. First planet discovered by telescope. I don't see it. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Nothing. I'm sure you've had it in view at some point now, but I just I can't recognize which one it would be. I can actually see some faint things in the in the viewfinder. Yeah. And like I'm wondering if uh, this thing right here might be it. Uh, 
not darn. <clears throat> Pleiades? Yeah. Uh, well, we, we visited Mars and we circled around looking for uh, Uranus. <laughs> now we're going to go to the Pleiades. Deep sky. That's M forty five, right? You'd know. M forty five open cluster. Analysis. The constellation Taurus. Dominated by hot blue stars. Ooh, look at that. I think we passed by the moon just now. Brightest open oh, cool. cluster, visible to naked eye. Pleiades Star Cluster. Let's see what happens when I just bump up that exposure. Five seconds. That's pretty cool. That light is coming from the moon off to the right. We'll check that out in a second. That's awesome. I love the Pleiades. All right, to the moon? Yes. Did you guys see the Pleiades? Mm-hmm. All right, the moon's going to be so bright. All right, we're going to the moon.
beautiful. That's really cool. Should we try Henrietta? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna switch back to the, uh, the first telescope we were using, the eight inch. It's all warbly when I move it around, mm -hmm. like it's underwater or something. Yeah. yeah that's a bit better. It's weird, I feel like the craters are really like uh, in focus on the bottom side, but not so much on the upper side. Mm-hmm. Make sure the camera's properly in there. Oh, there it is. I don't think my camera's perfectly flush. That's better. Goodbye. Thanks for sticking around on your on your break. I appreciate you. make it worse that made it worse oh me and my focusing and I want to say that's I forgot what crater that is already is that Copernicus focus? Mm -hmm. How you doing? Cold. <laughs> it is chilly out here. I don't even feel it. <laughs> it's because you're crazy. Let's 
move around a bit. Camera froze. Okay. Oh. Uh, restart the program really quick. Because I want to see the Orion Nebula. I ain't done. I'm solved. All right, let's go to the Orion Nebula because we've heard this a million times. <laughs> That's M42, right? We're going to the Orion Nebula through an eight-inch. Kennedy Optic Telescope. 
we actually haven't seen it through one of these telescopes yet. Like not even with the naked eye. So <laughs> we're just skipping straight to video. <clears throat> we are almost there. Going up to five seconds of exposure for us. Cool. Wow. Hot diggity. Welcome to the Orion Nebula. I'm going to just play that again. So cool looking. By 60 arc minutes in size and shines at a magnitude of 2.9. I love that. That is so awesome. Mm -hmm. Alright, I'm gonna go to uh, a galaxy. Let's go to M81. Exposure a little bit. All right, goodbye, Orion Nebula. Now we know the kind of telescope that you look best under. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go on over to um, M81, Bode's Galaxy.
Thank you for pointing that out. Yeah. Trying to get it nice and centered. There, yeah, that looks good. Okay. Yeah, I recognize what they look like through Carl's um, viewfinder. They look like these little smudges. Oops, that's mm -hmm. that's way too high. Let's go to. Seven seconds of exposure. All right, we're at M81, Bode's Galaxy. <clears throat> Bode's, Bode, that, that sweet Bode. Cool. Let's go up a little bit higher. Eight seconds of exposure. Oh, I'm starting to see more of the spiral structure. Let's go up to like 12 seconds. Awesome, cool. I can see it now on the phone there. You see it's like, like it's a, an S? Mm, yeah, I see it. Yes, that is the bar of the galaxy. Now let's see what they have to say about it again. So. This spiral galaxy is one of the brightest in a group of galaxies located in Ursa Major and is part of the local group of galaxies. It is approximately 36,000 light years in diameter. The orientation of this galaxy allows us to see almost all its spiral arms and large central bulge. Large exposure photographs show incredible detail within this distant galaxy. Through a small telescope, however, expect to see an oval-shaped hazy cloud. Lying close to M81 is M82, another member of the local group. Oh, I'll galaxy. explain in a second. M81 is an excellent object for novice amateurs. It is about 12 million light years from Earth, is 27 by 14 arc minutes in size, and shines at a magnitude of 6.9. All right, so what is a bar of a galaxy? Does it have to do with how fast it's spinning? Probably, <clears throat> but I know it's like um, a bulge, or not a bulge, but like uh, a geometric shape, more or less. It's um, as the stars are spiraling around the core, like water going down a drain, it spirals, yeah, probably so fast that this weird geometric bar starts to form, and it starts to push both the, the, the spinning cycle out the cyclone outwards and you have these two spokes that push the wheel outwards and that's the bar itself and uh, it's, it's weird <laughs> it's complicated but um, I don't know how, how else to explain it but it's just like a, a dense bar of stars that run throughout the center of the galaxy and hold the wheel together some of them can be kind of long right yeah this so, one looks really long. Yeah. Is that like... Yeah, that's that's weird. I was going to try and find M82. And then I'll call it good after that. You're not going to try to find Triangulum? No. Um, Too well, high up? Can you point it out to me again? It's, um... So if you look at where Mars is... Oh, wait, hang on one second. Let me increase the exposure back on this for, for anybody looking. I'll go back up to 10 seconds. Okay. Show me. So, um, or actually, this might be easier. I see Mars. Cassiopeia? Yeah. Um, 
you know the star that like Cassiopeia points to where you find Andromeda? Yeah. So if you, it's between that star and the moon. Closer to the star. It's it's like on its side. Or like it's on its tip. Do you have your laser? I have a laser actually. That might be easier. Let's go to M82 real quick, and then check that plane out. And then we'll go to, um, try the triangular belt. Try the triangle. Try the triangle. Okay, so back down to, uh, one second, or back down to, like, yeah, about a second of exposure. We're going to try and find M81 now. It should be really close by. Oh, boy, fog. I hope this isn't a problem later. Okay, I mean, let's see. Should be just around here. Oh, there, there it is, I think. Okay, I think I got it. I think I got it. We're, oh, yeah, we're coming up here. to the Cigar Galaxy. Oh, wrong way. Cool. Now this one should have a lot of color. And that's not really something... I mean, I, we kind of got some color in the Andromeda Galaxy. It was that beige color. Mm -hmm. It all looks beige to me. But, um... <laughs> that's a reference. But... This one should look like red and blue. So let's just bump it straight up to 11 seconds of exposure because we got pretty good tracking tonight. And thanks for people joining in. Oh, cool. Are they both the same galaxy? Um, M81 and M82? No, they're two different galaxies. But they're really close together. This one is actually getting tugged on by M81. Yeah, I can definitely see some color there. That's mm -hmm. cool. That should looks really I, should cool. Should I go up a little higher? Oh, right there's fine. Mm, I mean, you can always try it a little higher, just see what happens. You can always go back down. All right, we'll go to 14, the, my birthday number. <laughs> I definitely saw a lot of red. All right, we're going up to 14 seconds. Oh, cool, there it is. Yeah, I see a little bit more color. Mm -hmm. Ooh, you know what I can do here? Check this out. I can go over to here and increase the contrast. I think. Maybe not. I did not see contrast get changed. Oh, oh there it goes. Wow. <laughs> that did not help at all, did it? Oh, that looks weird. That does look weird. We'll drop the contrast back down. See if that helps. Huh. I feel like I see more color now. More blues, at least. Welcome to the exploding galaxy, M81. Or, so, oh, darn, I do that all the time. M82. Blech. <laughs> <laughs> I get these two mixed up all the time. Blech. Blech. Cool. That is awesome. All right, I think uh, we got... How much power we got left? All right, I'm down to 31% power left on the batteries. I don't like... I don't want to run below 20, so let's jump back out to here. 
I'm gonna do my best to find the um, Triangulum Galaxy. So before I do that though, I'm gonna switch back over to Alice, because Alice has the wide angle, and she'd be a lot easier to find something with, especially a galaxy, I feel like. However, no, yeah, Triangulum should be a bigger galaxy, and so shouldn't be that big of an issue. All right. <clears throat> like, I shouldn't be looking for something teeny tiny, like, we, like Uranus, like earlier. Uranus. Okay. My toes. Toes are freezing up? Yeah, they're starting to, like, hurt. Okay. All right. Maybe you better socks or something. Sorry for the blindingness. My bad. Okay. Different telescope. Oh, cool. Check this out. We got both of them in view. Let me see if I can fix it. Oh, yeah, I see them. Increase the exposure real quick. Now let's go up to seven seconds of exposure. I'll just show you um, M81 and M82, M82 together, and you can see how far apart they are. Whoopsies. Yeah, you can see that's M81 right there, Bode's Galaxy. And that's M82 right here. And we're looking through a Mead ETX-80 now. All right, I'm gonna go drop in the exposure again. I'm gonna increase the gain like crazy because I want to hunt down another galaxy. Let's do it. Okay. I believe in you. Thank you, so I love you. <laughs> okay. We got this. Cords aren't wrapping, and it's good. I'm gonna try and find the triangular galaxy. This is a, not a galaxy that's uh, in the telescope's list of things. Mead. You just tag them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Mead. Come on, guys, update your database. For whatever reason, they've got the Pinwheel Galaxy as M33, and that's not it. This is not not gonna work, fam. All right. What do they have as M101? Uh, I think also the Pinwheel Galaxy. <laughs> All right, so it's in between. I'm trying to find where Triangulum is again. Um, above Mars. Yeah. Uh, it's in between the. Um, that oh, star I see. Andromeda. Yeah, sorry, I was struggling with words for a second. Okay, I'm watching the screen. Alright, alright. I'm looking for a galaxy. It's the one, it's the three stars off to the right of Mars, right? It's like up into the right. One of them is really faint. Yeah, and the fainter one is uh, the closest one to the uh, Cassiopeia? No, the faintest one is closer to the moon. Oh, right, right, okay. But the one on the bottom uh, is the most furthest one? In the triangle? Yes. Okay, I don't 
don't see anything in the viewfinder. Where, oh, where could triangular be? So let's see if I can get that, um, see if I can get mirror in view. How is my knee? All right, do we have a star coming into view? Yes, a really bright one. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, so that's mirror. I'm going left of mirror. Is it a spiral galaxy? Yeah. Okay. Did I pass it? Um, no, I just want to know what I'm looking for. That was a, that was a galaxy. I'm not finding it at all. Hmm. Not in the viewfinder. It's visible to everyone but you. I know, right? <laughs> Apparently this is a really... Even my, I hate that my telescope doesn't even know. Yeah. Hmm. I think my lens just might be getting really foggy. I'll try and go back to Mirror Arc. Can you tell me when that bright star shows up again? Yes. See how we're super wide angle. I mean, shouldn't be a problem. Uh, wow. Can I find? Them? Oh, there it is. Okay, here we go. Back to Mirror Arc. Okay, it's there. <laughs> and, I wanna, and it, I believe it's to the left of Mirarch and in between the longest or the most furthest down star of um, Triangular. So it's in between those two somewhere. Bright stars? A couple, yeah. Okay, I think I'm at the bottom star of uh, Triangulum now. So I'm gonna go back over to Mirror Arc. Oh, wait. I think I saw something. There. Do you no see it? No way. Yeah, I do. I think we're there. Oh, finally. <laughs> After how long of searching for it? Years? I've been looking for this galaxy. I can see how it's 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 pretty easy to miss. It's a little fuzzy. But it's there. Okay, we're gonna get this right before my batteries die. Yes. Okay, that's pretty good right there. Now let's go 
do that exposure thingy. <laughs> you need a tile for it. Uh huh. All right, so let's drop this back down to 500 and go up to 10 seconds of exposure. And welcome to the Triangulum Galaxy. It's been a while. M33, hello, how are you? Let me see if there's any questions that we're missing. Oh, that's. It's a bit bright. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Roll over that. Wonder why it's so bright out there. Okay, let's do the the high contrast thing. Maybe that'll help. I can definitely see some spirals. Oh, yeah. This one has a much shorter bar. Mm hmm. I'm gonna go up to like 14 seconds of exposure. Let's do it. You found the triangular galaxy. You helped me. I didn't. Uh, there's no way I would have been able to spot this and look. I did not see it in the viewfinder at all. It's so fuzzy. Cool. Let's see if increasing the contrast helps at all. Oh, I can increase the saturation. I didn't know that. Next time I'll do that, we can increase the color, bright, like how intense the colors are. Oh, cool. So while I'm looking at, so see how this is all blue? Mm-hmm. Let's drop the saturation. Mm. Maybe increase the contrast a little bit more. Cool. That's a good view. There's Triangulum. I'm gonna just try and recognize where this is. Yep, it's in between those two galaxies. It's a little bit, or those two stars, and it's a little bit lower. And yeah, I do not see it at all through the viewfinder. Uh, it's a fi I'm using a 50 millimeter viewfinder, and I cannot see this galaxy through it. Oh, wow, a big comment, let's see. Hey, I have one query. It's that the stars which we see are from this same galaxy in the night, but when you are showing this galaxy, I could see some stars as well between them. How's that possible? Okay, so all these stars that are in the foreground here are within our galaxy, the Milky Way. And the galaxy that we're looking at in the, in the distance here, the Triangulum, is one of our neighboring galaxies, but its stars, its light, are not a part of our galaxy. I hope that clarifies that. Let me know if, if that doesn't. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining in. See you later. Let me see if there's any more questions. I just like need to move a little bit. Okay, I didn't see any more. But yeah, sweet. We got the Triangulum Galaxy. We did it. And uh, I'll be back out here in a few more hours to do this all over again. And keep showing you more space. Space a thon. Woo. Go home, recharge, warm up. Recharge and warm up. Yep. Thaw out. <laughs> <laughs>
Look at the moon again. Look at Andromeda again. Mm -hmm. No, uh, I don't think we'll look at Andromeda again. I think it'll be too low at that point. Mm. But definitely go back to Bodes and M81 and stuff. Maybe see some other stuff, too. You got a great view of Andromeda. Heck yeah. All right. Thanks for joining in, y'all. Stay spacey. Love ya. Bye.